Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Bander podcast. Before we get started, I've got some exciting news for you. The General Bander live podcast returns to the fucking Telegraph building on the 5th of May. We're doing it again. The last one was fucking outrageous. Uh, big setup, big videos, you know, DJ. What else do we have in there now? CO2. <laughs> And we're doing it again on the 5th of May. So uh, get your tickets in the motherfucking description. We're also doing, I say wait, it's me. Every It's me doing Vicker Street in Dublin. We're taking big swings this year, bringing my show Overkill to Vicker Street. Uh, a lot of tickets to sell. So let's fucking get after it. If you know anyone in Dublin, if you know anyone that's freshly evicted from their house and they need somewhere to stay on the 8th of September, send them to Vicker Street and we'll have a right bloody fucking laugh. Link is also in the description. Thanks very much. Enjoy the podcast. McKegney pisses on a guy. Go ahead. I don't know if he did it, but he was telling me there's a certain toilet in Berlin between the hours of like 7 and 12. There's a guy who's just there getting pissed on. Like that, that's what he does. I don't know if it's paid or just for passion. I love the way he, like he clocks in. <laughs> what time? What was the time window there? Let's say 7, 12. Do you know like imagine I mean? you turn up at 5 past 12 and the guy's like... I'm very. Uh, what's a German? I'm sorry, I cannot take receive piercings after traffic tra- was bastard. <laughs> <laughs> traffic was absolute nightmare. But that's what I say. The McKinney is like, does he get paid? And McKinney's like, I think he just does it because he likes it. So oh. some people are sitting in the office being like, can't wait for the food to bill to be on tonight. And he's like, I'm going to get to see piercings. Yeah, mm. I was going to shower, but I shan't because I will be getting plenty of showers later. <laughs> I wonder does he just get you know hop in his car after his car stinking. <laughs> I'll just sit next to the subway to that fucking smelly bastard. I know his hair's all slicked back. And all. It smells like a leisure we, center we, toilet. We just did the swimmers and he's like, no, <laughs> not really. I was doing a couple of lengths of a different kind. <laughs> and lengths of cock in my anus. <laughs> Pissing's weird. I always, you know, when people are like mad, get rid of the ranchers. Uh, when people are mad in the kinks, I always, I'm just like, what happened, man? I Unless the kinks mean. like, you know, fairly mild. You know what I mean? What's a mild kink? How do just, you rate them? you know, like, more like a preference, you know? Yeah. So, uh, like, like a position? That would yeah, so it's something like, yeah, something like that. That's more of a mild preference. Not like, see when it wanders into piss and shit, and... That's too much. Even like, even for an open-minded fella, feet, such as myself. Feet I could take. Um, not in a weird, like, you're taking photos of strangers on a, on a train or something. Yeah. But, like, you know, in the heat of the action, you just stuff it all in your mouth. <sighs> feet... F- you know what I mean? <laughs> We've all been there. Oh, I, c- I couldn't. Feeds one thing. Then when people like Tarantino, yeah, he's gratuitous with it. It's like here's a great action shit scene, and then eight minutes of feet. Yeah, I don't get why they're hot. They're dirty. It's like a mad car crash, and then in slow motion, there's just a like a f- limb with a foot going past the thing, and he's like, <laughs> "Did you see the thing where they photoshop? They photoshop the." Uh, Tarantino's face, like they, they had a template of like what a symmetrical, handsome face would look like, and then they put, do you see it? I'm seeing that. And then they pulled all his eyebrows and cheeks and nose and put it all into proportion, and then at the end they just snap it back and his forehead's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of TV people are in the feet. The, the guy who used to run Nickelodeon, Dan Schneider, okay. a lot of creepy stuff came out about him, like backstage stories and stuff, and apparently he had a really bad food, not, like a, like it's an affliction, that he had a really bad food fetish. A wild dose of the food well, fetish. <laughs> Stricken with a food fetish, can't oh, get out of bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going have two weeks off work for the food fetish. Foot in mouth. <laughs> Damn. Foot in mouth disease. Foot in mouth disease. It's not even the foot, it's like, you know, you better, you better like, get out of the, sh- get out of the bath. Yeah. You know, and then like walk on a series of clean tiles and then hop on the bed on your back. Yeah. Talcum them. Talc- well, no, do talcum, bro. No, put talcum on them. No, I don't want... Not if you're putting it in the mouth. Is it talcum? Tal- talcum? That's talcum powder, isn't it? Talcum? Talcum in the middle. Talcum powder. <laughs> you know, it's the, it's what's on the foot, ver- not the foot. You right. gotta go a long way for someone's foot to be like absolutely repulsive. Dude, I think after one long day of foot is stinking. <laughs> I don't know. I have pairs of shoes where if I just put them on and then take them off immediately, my feet are dirty. Yeah, but that's the shoe. Do you know, yeah, but you know, you, I can't think of a situation where someone's been going about all day and their feet are immaculate. But you see, this is this is uh, when you're into it. Yeah. That's I mean, the- I'll say this, and like an asshole, no bother. <laughs> talk them or no talk them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wipe their own white. I don't give a fuck. We powder donut. <laughs> <laughs> Gravy ring. Make a wish. So you're like an arsehole, yeah. man or woman? 
whatever. Who's there? Who's, whatever. Who's in? You know, like uh, there is a lot of. Would you would you fall into buy as a category? Nah, you're just the horny wee goat. Just whatever. He's the OG horny goat, but you're. you're, you're <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's the, the horny. Ki- he's a horny kid. <laughs> yeah. This guy. Oh, we horny belly goat. That's <laughs> what I am. <laughs> we, we willy goat. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think it's a generation. There's just a spectrum for me. You know, there's I'm attracted to who I'm attracted to. It's not really non-binary like, holds. Yeah, although now nah, when non-binary, uh, <laughs> still still be a man or a woman. You fucking freak. But I know that is funny. That's me getting cast. I don't mean that. Of course you do. I, do. I mean, I absolutely do. What do you call that? Like sort of YouTuber who's like f- full trans. But you know, it be it looks like a sort of girl from a porno, long hair. But you know, just a few giveaways like the fucking the Adam's apple, yeah. and then she's like, oh, <laughs> "No, Jeffrey Star, Jeffrey Star, Jeffrey Star." I. But even she slash he. Yeah. No, it's she. Come on, guys. She, wise up. Did she fuck a, a rapper like Kanye or something? I think it was a American footballer. It was someone. So there was. She, she, I think she was on a date with a or dating an American footballer, and people were trying to like do the fucking do the detective work Aye. to find out who what based on like what Cody was wearing and all this here shit. But like she was on a thing, just be like, "No, dude, I love cocks." <laughs> Dad, are you fucking serious? This not. It was literally like this non-binary shit. Is like people were bored during lockdown, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I was listening to was it Tim Dillon once, and he's he's gay, and then he has like a trans friend or something. He goes, "At the end of the day, he's like, you either like cocks or pussies," <laughs> and you're kind of like, "Yeah, that makes a lot of sense." Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. It's one to me like the no the like like the they them non-binary it's like cryptocurrency it has been explained to me a million times and, and every time i'm it. like I'm what not, i'm not investing yeah it's like i i don't understand it and people are just going it's the future i'm like i have no idea what anyone's talking about yeah at any point i just feel like okay, i mean it's just, i mean i'll say that i'm not one of these like i'm on fucking gb news screaming about it yeah. like, i don't give a f- i don't give a yeah. fuck it's hard to give a fuck you don't want to go down the line of like graham linehan where you've yeah. lost your family your career and you're still just like, I'm fighting for women. And you're like, no one but that's, a fuck that, about that's you. the thing. Like, I mean, like, what the fuck do I know? But like, trans seems like a legit thing. Yeah. And maybe, maybe don't let a child cut their dick off at like nine or something. But then it's all the weird, it's all the weird middle ground of like, I'm this and I'm fluid and I change all the time. But if you don't guess right, you're, you're losing your job. Yeah, and you're like, man, you, and you said you don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a shit. People need to give less of a fuck. Yeah. I, People I, have no fucks to give their life's too comfortable yeah. and then they're like what can i just fucking do for the crack and like I've, I've, like if someone just came up to me and went oh i'm a man now i'm turning into a woman or i'm trans i'm like all right you don't care uh, but it's been it's only been a thing in like the last i mean transgenders aren't a thing recently but it's only become a real well, issue uh, in like the past five seven years not even like uh, yeah. the term non-binary like referring to sexual or like gender i suppose yeah is new enough, like yeah, yeah. It, it, your man Jeffrey Star might be right. It might none just, of us it, have a clue what we're might, talking about. It, it might just be a lockdown Chelsea. thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I ever met a transgender person. You can't like, go from you know, like I'd lick anyone's arsehole to you know the specifics of <laughs> gender identity. It's between men and women, okay, guys. But I remember first time I met a transgender person. My mate punched one. Punched one. Punched one. Mm. It was at a party. We weren't like my friends weren't invited to, and they just showed up. I was invited, but they just came along. Yeah. And then they tried to kick them out, and one person trying to kick them out was a transgender girl. Oh. And he smacked her. Him. Smacked oh, her. we're in the words I'm around here in the fucking weeds. Sorry, he beat him to death. And <laughs> he smacked he smacked him and everyone was like, can't hit her. Like, you know, she's transgender. And he went, fucking, what's that? Like a man gets smacked like a fucking man. And that's been the most progressive attitude yeah. of anything. And that's what we call equality, children. <laughs> Chat shit get banged. I want you to bring out child, children's books just with that message. Yeah. Just chat shit get banged. And it, yeah, just get the end. And Fre- yeah, Freddie said, "Chat shit, get banged." You ready for bed now? <laughs> you read a fucking book to a child; they have no patience at all. Oh, a hundred percent. You're like, and then Teddy, like Eddie has a book at the minute called Eddie's Teddy or something, right? And it's all fucking Eddie Teddy and his friend Freddie and f- blah blah blah. Did you ever but, read them? Be like, who got paid millions I to know. write this shit? Not come with a caterpillar. <laughs> on the second day, he had an orange. On the second day, he had a fucking two grapefruits. And he on didn't the even day, illustrate it. He had a pickle, and he, you're just like, he just listed fruits, and then someone, I'll draw that. <laughs> two billion. He's yeah. made off of that cunt. That's it, and it's good for a toddler for about a week. Yeah. But like he'd be sitting there and he'd be like, Eddie had a teddy and he just goes to the end. He's like, and then they all left happily ever. And he's like, fuck that. <laughs> We're done. 
We're done with this stupid shit. I need the very horny caterpillar as an up. And, like, and he ate an ass. Yeah. Then he sucks some toes. <laughs> then he's non binary. Then back to the ass again. <laughs> Mixing it up. Bite the bust. Pull out. Back to the ass. Good night. Good Sleep night. Tight. Uh, I used to have to read stories all the time to like, because my sister was like eight years younger than me. So my mom was like, can you please just fucking like let me have an hour of peace and put her to bed? Oh, yeah. And I'm sitting there playing FIFA with all my friends. Like, yeah, no, no worries. I'll read fucking <laughs> the magic key. It's way better than oh, talking yeah. to my friends. You'll be on a magic, different type of magic key later <laughs> on in your life. <laughs> I'm on the magic key too, love here. here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's one thing I, I, I've learned. Like when you party now, when all my friends have kids and stuff, it's very different than when you partied younger. So it's very depressing oh. doing lines well, over what Thomas you? the Tank Engine plate. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you want it? Your mate's like, do you want a can? You're like, I need it. Will you clean? Choo choo. But it's it's like what age are you? Twenty six. See, yeah, like I'm thirty six. When you see <laughs> even anyone my age doing coke, you're like, it's become sad again. You know, it goes a yeah. bit cheeky, fun. Yeah, sad. It's a bit dangerous. Shouldn't be doing it. And then once you're once you've been allowed to do it for so many years, it's like, why are you still doing that? It's yeah. like going to nightclubs. Yeah, you should. They're the fucking... best when you're not legally allowed in them. Well, everything's better when it feels kind of sneaky. Yeah, we're not talking about that Louis C.K. bit. About like if you were gay back in the fucking whatever it was fifties or something. He's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this is illegal. Oh, I'm like, breaking my mother's heart. <laughs> yeah. Let's not discuss that's not the only sneaky thing Louis done. <laughs> no, <laughs> <not at all. laughs> that's because when I did uh, warm up for him, that's all anyone said to me was like, "Oh, did he? Did he get his dick out? Did yeah. he?" And I'm like, "I'd have let him." Yeah. I'd have, oh yeah, for sure. I just sucked it. I was like that bit I used to do. I'd have been like, "I'll get that for you." Like, you just <laughs> <my tits. laughs> you should have just went. I'm not a hot young comedian girl. No. <laughs> Of Ted, sounds about it. Yeah. Oh, if, he, if you give him a daddy wank, it'd be a 10 out of 10. I don't even think he did. I, I could tell after half an hour sitting with him, he was sick of talking to me. Probably. Because I am very annoying, especially when you've just met me. Louis, did you see WrestleMania? <laughs> it was a good year. I thought. <laughs> Storyline's about fuck, but sure. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay, dude. And then at one point, I was like, oh, can I go to the bathroom here? And he was like, yeah, yeah, you're not locked in this room or anything. And I was there to be like, no, I've fucking heard Louis, but thank you. He was just a happy to get rid of me. Yeah. And then he came off stage and I went to go talking to him again. He just turned and ran out the door. Rather than even a polite fucking good to say, he ran away from me. What makes that weird, though? Being so annoying that Louis C.K. makes you think you're a fucking pest, that's that's a weird feeling. You know, but it's got like, uh, you know, like date vibes or something. You know what I mean? There's like, a, there's a weird, there's a weird tension to it that there shouldn't be. Why can't, why, like if, if you... If you got dropped in a room with just a fucking guy. Yeah. And you were like, say you're waiting. Tell me more. Say you're like waiting outside the MOT center or something. Yeah. You could just, you, and you got ch- talking. So you could chat away to anybody. Yeah. But because it's Louis C.K. And he's probably going, well, this young comedian's probably going to fucking pester me here. And you're going, he thinks I'm going to pester him. And then yeah. you're like, so. I, and, and Did you go to Giants College? And it's not, it's it's because for me, he's to me the, the greatest comedian ever. He, he was a big, big influence. So it's it's not even like you're in a room with fucking John Bishop, who is a fine comedian, but he's not my favorite. Yeah, well, that's it. It's fucking Louis C.K. just said my... I came in and he was like, oh, hi, William. Nice to meet you. I was like... Sorry, like your arsehole or anything? Do you want to see my feet? I don't know what you're into, but I'll do it. So, <laughs> and you're trying to make a polite conversation, and in your mind you're just being like, what's it like working with Robin Williams? Could you see it in his eyes before he did it? Uh, like, there's so many questions. Was he dying inside, was uh, he? Do you know what? Oh, and they're like, what, what's, what's it like doing mass? You, there's so many questions you have, and you you just can't yeah. like, get them all out without sounding like a fucking And then freak. also it's like pre-gig. Like, no one's really on top. Like, I've been at Lavery's and people have been trying to talk to me and I'm, you're looking through them you're just going uh, shut up I had like someone a- get annoyed at me because I was not know that side bit of the stage before you go on mm-hmm. and someone came over to talk to me and I was like oh hi and then like turned away and they were like yeah you're really rude you didn't speak to me and I was like I was about to go on I'm not fucking talking to anyone at that point oh, yeah. and people don't get that they're like oh, I just want to reach out and I'm like I'm fucking car I'm about yeah, that, to that, go on that has happened to me a million times over the years yeah like, or there was a girl, can I get a photo went on? I was like, I'm go- hold on, I can't right now. And she was like, and she said something like, you fucking think I take hell for it. And I was like, <laughs> he's walking off and I'm walking on. I'm not going to stand here and get a photo. Yeah. And it's always good when they can't work their phone either. 
Yeah, everybody. Get a photo tonight. He's got his flash on. Can I get a photo tonight? I decided to bring out this uh, Samsung here from All 2007, right. which I haven't opened in fucking a year. Yeah. No wonder Kevin Hart just took the camera off people and was like, snap. Uh, not I, me, because they didn't see the company. I'm not tall enough to do that with most people. I'd be like jumping to get it, but I wish I could do that. But I'll tell you something. When he does that, I, I think I know why he does it. Why? I think he's had a bit of media training or something. He must have. Because he takes it and he goes like, boom, and he takes this gorgeous, perfectly angled photo. <laughs> and everyone's in the back are like... <laughs> <laughs> Like it's here, and he's just like you know beaming and like looks photoshopped into the photo. Yeah, <laughs> like the, the, the one that we got like the night where he was doing laveries, and we thought he'd left, and we were just playing tunes, and I was drinking at the bar. And one of the few nights I was actually drinking, and then he he obviously had a few drinks in him and wanted to give the bar staff like shots of that tequila, and he walked back out, and and I turned around to me, oh, I was like, get the, get the fucking tunes on. Again, it's so awkward in here. And then he put this tune on, Kevin Hart was like, oh, what's that? And, all. and then Maureen was like, what is it? Tell him what it is now. And it was all- Wagon wheel. And it was all, <laughs> it's Christy Mirror, lad. And then, and then it got so awkward. <laughs> Do you like the Shankle Prod boys, Kevin? <laughs> Let me seduce you with the stylings of the Gertrude Star. He's- <laughs> That shit was old and beautiful. <laughs> Fuck, I like this bitch. What is that, a fucking flute or something? <laughs> I told you my nanny meeting Kevin Hart, didn't I? Aye, unbelievable. That's fucking insane. Unbelievable. The fact that she had, she got a photo, like she's in the background of the photo, fucking eating a big sandwich. What? <laughs> she earned the photo. And she's, she's in the back, back of the photo. Just <laughs> 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 she met, him, met him in a toilet in Berlin and just fucking, <laughs> and then didn't know who he was. And then after I was like, how the fuck did you not know like everyone in the room staring at the guy and you didn't know it him. It's like, thought it was disgraceful. The people would still stare at a black man. It's fucking terrible in this day and age. And, and let him, let him, him and his eight bodyguards <laughs> and his nine family members, they get in peace like it's normal, like it's the rest of us. <laughs> but as my grandparents come off of racist shit all the time. And so you you go to go like, come on. And then you're like, you're born in the forties. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When there was no black people in Northern Ireland. Not like now where there's four. Like, th th like things like my, that joke I have at the minute where I'm like I'm a racist but like not yet you know like <laughs> like eventually it all catches up way and people are like you can't say that you can't say that yeah. and uh, <laughs> I have another story to tell you a little bit yeah. old podcast <laughs> but um, like I, you talk to like Maureen's mom or something she grew up in like the north of England and she'd be like you know like fucking KSI got in trouble for dropping the pee bomb the other day he did yeah. he did but she was like oh that's the pee shop you know <laughs> and if you ask the guy who worked there where do you work he'd say i own this particular yeah. p his shop. name is normally the p word followed by his actual name yeah steve I, probably. I, i'm like p just, word christopher yeah <laughs> yeah norman just regular <laughs> regular fucking <laughs> yeah you know like so and she was like and that's the way people talk and then eventually you just and I, you know you you were loyal to that yeah that p shop <laughs> yeah yeah that's the p shop you went to with p brian and that's where you went <laughs> <laughs> but then in it's so weird going to England and there's a million of those shops and it, it, there, there's no I've never seen a white person working in them ever no. it is it's that specific shop like well yeah of course but I mean the, the, not that bad I'm looking chipsticks at two in the morning I'm not yeah but like society would fall apart without things like that 100% you know it's like fucking America going on about oh too many fucking Mexicans coming in here and all this shit they're like see if you pulled all the Mexicans out of that country it won't go the place yeah. will fall to shit. So have you ever seen that that viral clip of the guy being like, there's too many foreigners coming here and they don't work and they're taking our jobs. And the ground's like, how are they taking your jobs if they're not working? Because like, they do it. It's simple as that. It's That's simple. the level of yeah. dickhead that really complains the, about it. They're not working, taking our jobs. Oh, sorry, are we bored <laughs> in there now? With the big yawn. <laughs> yawn. You're not interested in immigration then? <laughs> So I know this episode's going rough. It's just Niles fucking sleeping. He's like, I'm interested in being putting a snap it. <laughs> we'll go back to Lincoln Hole so he pays attention. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> that desk just went up a foot there. I saw that. Have you done more about ours podcasting this week and you've done sleeping? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember when I used to, when I was younger, listening to the podcast, being like, that'd be a class job. You'd love it every day. And after about two of them, you're coming in like, fucking let's try and be funny again. Fuck yeah, but sometimes it's easy, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get, it's because it's your job and you're used to it, and then you, it's like any job, you complain about it. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a fucking sweet dude. Me and Aaron yesterday pulled into a fucking garage. He got a sausage bop. I got some of them protein pancakes you like. 
Uh, nice. And you say that like you got them for me. Yeah, uh, the plug. And then, you know, vaped their whole way down the road listening to like Alchemist. And I pulled up and I was like, man, where where else would you get this? Yeah. Where would you get just sailing in to do another episode of a new podcast that's yeah. in the fucking charts around it? Like, yeah. where else yeah, would you yeah. get it? You, there's times you catch yourself on, like you're playing like a fucking thousand seater or something in your garden. Like, ah, the water's warm in here. And yeah, there's something that has to be like, fuck up. Oh, yeah. Fuck up. Like, the only thing, the only bad thing, like, someone asked that in a question the other day, like, what's the worst shame was in? They're like, what's the worst bit about comedy? I don't think we answered it even. But for the worst part for me is not being in the mood to be entertaining. <laughs> yes. That, that's the that's by far the worst bit. Yeah. Which, again, it's not, I mean, I don't suppose that guy who works in the toilets in Berlin <laughs> is up for getting pissed on all the time. Sometimes he must have to turn it on. It has to be like, man, I need to be in piss face today. But there's, there's no, uh, there's no like, uh, what's the word? Like emotional investment. Like some people turn up their job like, man, I have to just sit in this security booth for fucking 12 hours. Yeah. And, but the only thing you're really battling against is like looking at the clock, you know, just winding down the clock. Whereas like, there's no like big emotional roller coaster involved in it. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. you do stand up, you're like. Like you're like I've had a long day already. I'm fucking knackered, and now I have to be like, hey, you know, hey guys, yeah. Johnny Sharp, and literally fingering guys. Let's talk about it, John. And you just want your bed. Driving home in the car, like. Uh, but sometimes those end up being fucking smashers, and you come off with the rush again. Well, so I noticed when we were in Edinburgh, like every day, you know, you fucking drink yourself stupid and then the next day you'd be like not today, man. I can't, I can't. But the gig reset you every day, so like oh, three no. o'clock you would come out. Weird sensation too, because we're in a we were in that bunker, and then we're you just, come out in the street, broad daylight, and you've had like a big adrenaline rush and all, and and you come out, and you go, oh, I'm fine again. Opening the door into that room because it was a nightclub was like someone just got a bag full of piss, farts, and bulk. Mm -hmm. As soon as, it's like opening an oven full of those smells, it just fucking hit you. Yeah, and then they throw a whack of bleach on you and be like, smell away. Smell like, away. No, no, it's worse. <laughs> You've got piss, shit, and bulk. Now with bleach. The, the, that feeling of like, whenever your guy before us had a full crowd and they would leave, and you'd walk in, you're just like, you're just like that's <laughs> that just all the breath, all the ass, and all the sweat. Just it's those seats see sweaty holes for eight hours oh a day. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you come in. Oh, to be an Edinburgh fringe seat. Oh fuck me, <laughs> in the hive. <laughs> Just absolutely fucking disgusting. There's nothing in Edinburgh that's not sticky. Just everything's just like... No, the, the floors, the people, the, the people. stages, everything. I wonder... No, I was going to say, oh, that'd be miserable. I was going to say, well, would it be different if they did it at a different time of year? But it would have to be the summer. No, you, you wouldn't want all of that, but it's raining. Uh, well, that's it. Like, I was just... I had a few dates last time I did it, and it was passion down. Yeah. And a wet crowd coming in. Not the wet I'd like. <laughs> Soaking. <laughs> So you want your crowd moist before you go on? That'd you, be great. You demand a horny crowd. Yeah, I want everyone to have like a half a boner. Ah, no, you, you'd be sitting doing stand up and everyone's like, that'd be great. That's how Shane feels. Oh, bar. <laughs> oh, bar. <laughs> Where's Thomas? Oh, I was in Port Rush the other night and I was talking. It was the one, one bit of stand up from last year that I pulled into this set that I was doing. And I was like, you know, the hall pass bit. And I said to someone, I was like, do you have a hall pass? And I was like, yay. And, I, and that <laughs> totally threw me off. <laughs> I was like, ah, yeah, because everyone went mad, and I was yeah. like, that's funnier than you know. <laughs> Any thing I was gonna say, you'd always want to be a sex symbol, but like when someone it was ever like, oh, she fancies you, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with her? Exactly, yeah. Pick better. I said something like, you know, where where did you put your guide dog or something? You know, something like that. There, yeah, in front of she's blind. <laughs> you know, so when the, when people are like, oh yeah, yeah, she fancies me, like, why do you fancy this limpy midget with tits? Oh, there, you, there's you a, get a bite, though. You get a bite. You're, you're that boxing dress that'll be leotard and people seeing your wee giblets all Kieran Bartlett stopping. couldn't believe like the amount of attention I was getting off it he was like I just you're dressed like that and you're getting away like how are people attracted to that and I'm like I well think he's it's married the... that's more unbelievable <laughs> so nasty <laughs> so nasty I'm married <laughs> there's hope for everyone guys. unbelievable you know, that's why I'm glad McKegney's about he's the only other horny cunt but you know I've what <laughs> Everyone else was like, give her, like, look into a woman's eyes. I mean, we came here just like, go to a fucking sex party up in Oma, let's go. Uh, <laughs> sex party in Oma. <laughs> when you're done bucking there, I have a load of black buttons for sale here. Do you, <laughs> you want some turf? Take on me. Yeah. If you're feeling a bit better, Keezy's rolling joints in the shed there if you just want to recharge. <laughs> 
But just so he's past Bosey's balls. Yeah, but <laughs> that's the a door. bar, no uh, <laughs> Is there? Is it longest balls I've ever seen in my life. I haven't seen them, and he's offered, and every time I've been like, no, it, thank that, you. I mean, that again, that was at the Edinburgh Fringe, and he was thought it'd be funny to like shout with the door or pissed sitting down with the door open, and then he sat up off the toilet, and the bag was hanging down. <laughs> the bag was just nearly in the water. Yeah, it's like if your nanny collects like pennies in a jar fridge, oh, and yeah. has to take them to the bank. It's like he won a goldfish at a fair. <laughs> Hang them between. If you flush the toilet, there would have been like up the U bend and halfway into the next room. Do you ever get when your dog takes too big a shit and you've just got the bag like that? <laughs> yeah. That's his balls. Long bollocks. Uh, Chrissy long balls. And, uh, Are you hitting up Edinburgh at all this year? I don't think so. Well, I, I might go as a bit of a, a tourist, you know. I have, I'm have. i planning to release a couple of big shows right. in August, so mm. that kind of wipes. Mm. I can't do a fr- a, I can't do like a stint at it, but I would definitely. It's like anything. As soon as everyone else goes over, you're like, "Fuck it, I, I may go here for a couple of days." This is I th- it's my first year doing it properly. Mm. I think this is the first year there's a proper like section of Northern Irish comedian. Normally, it would be like Mickey and McCann would go, yeah. or like Dave and Aaron, but there was yeah. never a lot over. Yeah, I think this year is me, Mickey, Robbie, Kieran, great, and then a few others who I'm not too sure of, like all going over at once class so it's good for people who want to stand up here and they don't get to see it i'm, I'm hoping they come to it please and wh- come to it like it's cost me so much money please go please go please please go please go to it, it costs a fortune i'll so be not, your seat it's please an absolute go. racket see people are talking about like investments and i'll see if you could afford a, an apartment in edinburgh yeah amazing oh f- fuck me the the amount they must make i was looking for accommodation for ages i'm sorted now but i was looking at like an apartment for a month five grand I was quoted yeah, sometimes. Easy. And you're like, any wonder only rich cunts are on TV. It's, he's I'm so wrong. emotional. <laughs> he's getting so emotional about it. It's, it's so hard as a working class boy, Colin. Edinburgh Fringe. Look what you're doing to this man. The pip doesn't cover it. I just can't. <laughs> the pip doesn't that, cover it. It's not covered. <laughs> I can't write them a letter and be like, I'm looking to go away for a month and go on a rip. Can you pay for that, please? I live my dreams and I can't do it. <laughs> But no, it's it. Have you tried? Is there any like access, like accessible rooms or anything? You, you know, you can like my room's accessible. Is it? Yeah. Um, mainly because I'm signed with an agent that is specialising in disabled acts, so he was kind of strict on like, you know, you need your room to be accessible to disabled people. Whereas I was just like, just give me a good room in a good spot. But mine is accessible. That flat that we stayed in, um, I was in the fucking wheelchair access room. You were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Staying with an actual disabled guy and comment, there's handrails beside the bed, I'm taking that. I did need the the girth of the door to get through, though. <laughs> and I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Who was, was it? You now who came in one morning and me and McCann were sitting just no clothes on, vaping with sunglasses on? Oh, yeah. Every day. <laughs> yeah. What the, every day. <laughs> you walked in all fucking... That's, that, it took, that's what it took for you to believe I was disabled when you saw me in the morning and I was like uh, he's, he, I was like what are you fighting last night you turn him and you're, he's like I'm disabled your actual words were is that real and I went <laughs> yes see the thing I do material like that's what that is I thought you just fucking like <laughs> fell down some steps or something the night before no, it, it, it took Patty to turn with me to realise like how the extent of it because it's only when I'm when I'm tired it takes my body longer. Because I only see you recharge. at night, you know, predominantly, yeah. and you might have loosened up throughout the day. Yeah, it's like any like if you had sore muscles from lifting weights and yeah. you walked about all day, it would loosen up. You're yeah. the same. You come in like a wee T Rex, and I was like, "This is all this business here." Yes, <laughs> like a fucker to say about. <laughs> <laughs> like a guy from Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> More sugar. That's true. I'm that <laughs> I was like, all right, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> but that that's be the best way to describe what it is. It's like the way you feel after you've been lifting weights the day before. But on one side. I, I'll feel like that in the morning. Um, almost all over because this side has to then compensate for what this uh, side can't do. So I walk like fucking Mick Foley now. Like I'm just walking side to side because I've got a limp. Like it's worse as you get older. Nice. Do you know what I mean? I've like <laughs> Oscar Slatters and both my knee. I've got, I've got the cocksucker's knee. Like just we fucking you know when the muscle grows over the bone. You ever heard of that? Oscar Slatters? Os- yeah. Oscar Slatters. Play for Juventus. I think he's in jail now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the, the muscle grows over the, the bone. Right. So I've just Can got... you see it? Like from the outside? Does you it can see it? it. Like there. See, there's Oh, at the bottom? There's my kneecap. Uh-huh. There's the Oscar Slatters. Fucking <laughs> dirty <Yeah>. Slatters. <laughs> dirty, dirty so Slatters. Every time I walk, my bones just constantly like poking into the muscle. So it's shit like that. You accumulate over time. It's a pain in the fucking hole. 
But uh, other than that, we're all good. We get a car, so it's fine. We're like an ass for vape, and we're fucking going about our day like nothing's <laughs> even gone wrong. There are times before if I sleep with someone, I have to stretch before him, and nothing kills the mood more than my wanking arsehole. Laugh. Start yourself off. <laughs> And one, and two, and here we go. I'm doing the downward facing dog, thank you. <laughs> it's stuck in. If I'm seeing something, there are just nights I'll have to go if I'm seeing someone, I'm like, you're doing the work today. I'll, I'll, I'll be there and I'm like supporting you, but you're, you're you know. You're I'm going to arrive home later on, fall into bed, like, no slatters playing. <laughs> you're going to have to put in a bit of a shift here. <laughs> Can't go on my knees. Do you ever just throw someone in one of those, like, just get the full, uh, the full DLA treatment and, you know. All the time. Get the sex swing and the fucking, <laughs> it's supposed to lower you into the bath, but, you know, if you get in it the other way, just get the ass exposed. <laughs> gang, 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 gang. Pull the emergency cord. That's it, when we're all getting too, in the future, when we're all too fat to fucking move, that will be sex. Just like an episode of Robot Wars. Look forward to it. No, it'll just be a pill or something. Nah. People will just be like, take that. They'll be like, I... Demolition Man, is that the movie? No. It'll just be a fucking, it'll be an AI plug in. You're just like, oh, uh, 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 uh. Do you ever see, do you ever see that guy? <laughs> what did they play it on? I guess. Do you ever see the guy just keeps coming? <laughs> yeah, in, in, in the mirror every day. <laughs> <laughs> Out my window, whoever this fella is. Uh, Fuck off, though. Get your own room. This podcast is sponsored, as always, by Manscaped.com. They're hanging in there. They've been with us since day one. They're the world's leading device when it comes to just deep in your scrout bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of year, guys. It's spring, summer. You know, people are starting to book holidays. You want to go on holiday with that absolutely gleaming pouch. And uh, I'm going to cut to the chase here, guys. You want to get yourself the care package. Go on to... Um, Manscaped.com, use the code GENBAM1, order yourself the care package. It's got the lawnmower 4.0, it's got the weed whacker, it's got the ball toner, it's got the ball deodorant, it's got the ball everything. It's got boxers in there, it comes in a leather travel case, it's unbelievable. Get the full care package, buy for yourself, buy for someone else. If you're a lady, you know, you can take that lawnmower 4.0 to those spaniel ears, no bother. <laughs> it's the same material, you know what I mean? <laughs> we don't discriminate around here. But all you need to do is go to manscaped.com, use the code GEMBANT1 and get 20% off. And they're not giving these things away, so that's quite a considerable discount. Enjoy it, my guys. Manscaped.com, use the code GEMBANT1. Do you have anxious thoughts? Are you restless at night? Or do you just not feel like your best self? Making sure we feel our best should be our top priority. And by spending a few minutes with calm each day, you can be sure you're taking the necessary time to prioritize yourself Calm helps you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. Their guided meditations, sleep stories, relaxing music tracks, and daily movement sessions are all designed to give you the tools to improve the way you feel. Do you know how many people use this now? Millions. A hundred million people Jesus. around the world use Calm. Even if you've never meditated before, uh, you'll get the support you need to reduce stress, improve focus, and uplift your mood. The sleep stories help you drift off quickly to recharge your brain. They're actually great. We've used those ourselves at home. There's some celebrity reading a, a beautiful story. Listen to Killian Murphy. He was doing some sort of tour of Ireland. He's like, here we are at Dunluce Castle. And I'll tell you what, it was hard to sleep. It was so goddamn sexy. That's a lie. I was asleep in seconds. Uh, so all you need to do if you listen to this podcast is go to calm.com slash banter. You'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every single week. That's calm.com slash banter for 40% off and unlimited access to Calm's entire library. But uh, I think we're all going to get to the stage of like, you ever seen Wally now? Yeah. Where everyone's too fat to do fuck all. <laughs> that, that, that's going to happen. Can't stop <laughs> oh god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Father of two, oh. Dale Decker, suffers from a rare and seemingly incurable condition that leads to him <laughs> suffering up to 100 unwanted orgasms a day. There's nothing. He's like, un 100 unwanted? <laughs> the other four he wanted? <laughs> Seven was planted. <laughs> Even though it might physically feel good, the whole time inside your Deal mind, Decker. you're completely disgusted. Someone, who's Dale Decker? 
I mean, he sounds like he's in Tool or something. I'm yeah. fairly certain that's the bad guy from Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh, what's going on? Go, bro. Yeah, Here, bro, worst trousers to wear ever if you're coming a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Get a pair of fucking black pants on, bro. Man's in the beige khakis. Wear, wear some trackies, like fuck's sake. Yeah, wear a dress. Public, he's still got time to get highlights though, even though he's coming a hundred times. Kids, if you're around strangers, I mean, it it can make a person break real fast. The thirty-seven-year-old is the first man to ever speak pub. <laughs> Year older than me, that guy. <laughs> Year older than me, <laughs> bro. I'm old, man. I'm of I'm what midlife. 36, bro. I'm midlife crisis, yeah, man. Are you? 36. I thought you were 33. Condition. So, like, who's 33? McCarney's 33. McCarney's 30. Th- Do you think he's older? I thought he was my age. Right. Like, uh, like a year. Every th- it's him, him, McKegney, and Jordy. I met them all, and I thought, oh, finally, people my age, and they're all like near 30. What age is McKegney? I think he's 20 or 29. Right. And, and Jordy's 30. Yeah. Like, as of last week. Fuck but it. everyone looks like weird. You know, like McCann, if, if someone told you he was 41, you'd be like, all right. I it depends. If I if I've like had water that day, I look 19. Oh, and if, yeah. if I'm hungover, I look 53. Yeah. You get, well McCann's he'll get a he'll get a fucking high fade on his hair, and people are like, Have you lost nine stone? It's <laughs> <laughs> like no I've short today, and everyone's like, looks good on you. I look, uh, I don't know, I think I just look consist, like, whatever level of shite I look, I stayed the same for you, two decades. You have looked, well, I think you look the same from when I met you, and then I'll see photos from back then, and I'm like, yeah, you do look a bit younger. Then? Yeah, then. Yeah, probably. But like, I think you look better now, you're definitely slimmer now. Oh, thanks. From when I met you. Thanks. Um, frail. Known as persistent <laughs> sexual arousal syndrome. Persistent sexual arousal. Yes, yes. Mickey has that. And he says it's ruining his life. <laughs> Just imagine being that, like your kid's yeah, nativity. Your father's too. Yeah. At his casket, and you're saying goodbye to him, and then you have nine orgasms. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine being stood over your father's <laughs> casket at his funeral <laughs> and nodding on his head nine times. I'm proud of you, son. Oh, yeah. fuck are you? Yeah. I might do that to be fair. They're like, at least put the cock away, man. <laughs> At least put it away. I had to. Uh, ah. Fuck, he's really taking the death hard. <laughs> and, uh, it's all right. It'll be all good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, just so much. I'm just so upset. <laughs> that guy's been oh. intensely crying a hundred times every day since. <laughs> Does it go into when it started? I don't know. I'll probably okay. tell you. While your whole family is He's dying for one that... Do you know what I think, though? <laughs> Do you know what I think? I bet, you. Yeah, you know, everyone's everyone's had an untimely bust. You know, when when you're something's a bit risky, someone's close by, yeah. someone bursts in a room or something. Yeah, we've all needed to bust a ride two or three, a time. Two or three times I've put on a real poker face and just been like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just done a just done an empty bust. <laughs> I, would, I think, would you not get good at busting nuts? <laughs> You, you would get good at just being like, <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, like a, like it's a wee fart. Yeah, you wouldn't need to just be like, <laughs> but that, that looks like it hurts. Well, that's well, maybe he might be on like number seventy-eight of this. <laughs> I mean, how how many how many do you have to blow? You know, like before the tanks are empty. <laughs> before it's just like. His deck just looks like a car home patient at this point. Just, <laughs> I don't even know where I am. <laughs> just busting up. Well, does he do it through his, through the night too? Or I wonder does he get a bit of a break during his sleep? I, I don't know. I have another <laughs> orgasm as long as you live. <laughs> but you know what? You just keep on coming. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> you just keep on coming. It, it looks like a fucking truck flying through the desert, but it's a big cock. <laughs> Keep on coming, boys. Well, we sad face on it. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> a hundred comers club. <laughs> Dale from Wisconsin in America was enjoying his two rivers of jizz. <laughs> <laughs> when he slipped a disc in his back. Oh, he slipped a disc. The chair, triggering the condition for unknown reasons. They put me in the back of the ambulance to take me to the hospital. And on the way there, I had my first five orgasms, and they've never stopped. 
Dale has been unable to work <laughs> since the accident. I've blown my back out. <coughs> and the last thing I wanted to do was bust a nut. Yeah. Especially if it slipped the desk. You're like, uh, uh, uh. Yes, exactly. I'd be, be in so much pain. I'd be so sore. That's probably what the expression's from. It's the slept desk in the common. You know, for a fact, other nurses in that hospital were being like, go in the room seven. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, all, <laughs> they're all at the reception eating their snack jacks Like, oh my God. Just you all 15 of the staff wanted to make sure if you're all right, right? And I, oh. <laughs> How was your dinner? Oh, was that good, was it? Yeah. Thank you. I'll tell the <laughs> chef. <laughs> I'll let them know your sponge cake was good. <laughs> <laughs> Be a nightmare trying to talk to him. You're like, so uh, what do you think? We meet up about two o'clock and then. <laughs> and then after that, we'll go pop in to get a few groceries. <laughs> like, you'd just be talking to him and we burst. Because he's just like. <laughs> You could not take him to parent teacher meeting with his kid ever. No, or he couldn't even go and pick his own kids up. No. Stand at the playground. There's a guy at the gate coming uncontrollably. <laughs> Which one? Oh, Lee Maloney slipped a disc in his back. He's, he's struggling. This is, this is the problem with America. If this was like in the UK, God bless the NHS sort of yes. call. Uh, thank God, thank God for that clap. Them up. Yes, yes, thank you. You know, they would, they would fix that for you. Yeah. But in America, he'd be sitting in the room and they'd be like, so it's going to cost you £225,000. And he's yeah. like... <laughs> I guess I'll just live with it. Oh, fuck the pain. <laughs> fuck the pain. It's going to be 220 grand. Oh, no. Is that a comp? No. I'll tell you, this is a wee spastic. God bless the NHS. No. <laughs> the amount of therapy I had to go through as a child. Oh, on, the, on the house, kid. Thank you for it. On the it's house. <laughs> fucking shout out, NHS. How oh, listen is that? Fuck me. Five minutes. That's a fucking five more minutes of Boston. It was mostly housebound. Oh, wait, he's going to play a bit of frisbee. I'll relieve the fucking tension. Public. But he enjoys playing frisbee golf with frisbee his golf? friends. I'd rather be common. <laughs> I'd rather slip a disc in my back. Oh, God. It's, it Hold good. him one. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good the shot was. <laughs> oh, off the rim and in. <laughs> they happen in the shower. I just had nine rather powerful orgasmic sensations flow through my entire body and now it feels like every muscle from here to about here is doing this <laughs> sounds class <laughs> while the condition is so rare most doctors can't even diagnose it is that what you have yeah uh, you have similar you know you wake up and you're like, i come that much that's why my knees are fucked i'm always on them just being oh geez. fucking oscar jackiosis or whatever he's called What's it called? Oscar, uh, Oscar Slatters. Oscar Slatters. Oscar Pistorius. Widely acknowledged by specialists in the field. PSAS. That face will stop you coming, ever. PSAS. <laughs> We're going to show you Denise here for a second. Spasms. Cured. Yeah. Is not necessarily sexual. Um, and she looks like she's seen no some shit. Yeah, she's bored. She's not phased by this. She's bored of everything sexual. Due to intense suffering. I've been a gynecologist well. for 38 years and I last year stitched up my pussy. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I've seen it. I'm absolutely done. Home life where wife April struggles to cope with the situation. Did you ever have highlights in your hair? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, around the 06 when they were in. Did you go full M and M at one point? Like I did. Oh, fuck oh, that was more recent than. Oh fuck, we don't talk. We don't talk about that. Remember why, that shit? Why, why not? Because it was fucking brutal looking. Oh, I, like remember I shaved my beard and went blonde highlights, thinking I'll look like Eminem and just look like James Corden. <laughs> Fucking brutal look, <laughs> terrible looking. Like I look back in those photos, I'm like, someone should have stopped I, me. I put a photo up on Patreon to get some questions, and uh, I thought it was a nice photo of you. It was from the time you did. Was it that charity gig? Where was that? That was at the Calm Market. Or not Calm like, Market. What do you call it? Uh, yeah, it was common market. Yeah. This is what I mean. I'll look like that in one photo and then look like I'm singing simply the best at the Sandy Row Rangers if I have a big meal. Yeah. Like, I'm just like... Ugh. I used to say, there was a point where you looked like, you know, like... Um, when I, would, I don't know if I called you Dear Face, I would call you like Tom Selenio because you look just you like did, yeah. the, the son of a... Like a little fat son of a mafia boss. I look like I'm on spaghetti all the time. Who just got away with murder. Where's my, where's my spaghetti? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I'll look like that and then go to the gym for a month. I ask a <laughs> It's a real condition. It's a real condition. That's how, I'm like a wee disabled son of a mob boss, so he can't make fun of me. Is the knees uh, to do with the cerebral palsy, or is that it's just like an a, unfortunate? It's like a knock-on okay. effect. So, like a lot of cerebral palsy, like football players and athletes and stuff, they have such 
there's so much room to get injured. Mm. We have to warm up for longer. We have to warm down, take a lot more rest. So the are you play- saying we like we, you and footballers? Me and all my personalities. Me, <laughs> me and like when I played football for the the football the Northern Ireland team. Uh huh. There was a lot of fucking stretching just con- in the rooms. There was a lot of stretching before we played, and um, just a lot of treatment because there's such a high risk of getting injured. Right. So the playing careers are quite short. In the in in, in the Paralympic and world, and uh, yeah, not specifically Paralympics. Like you know, like someone with restricted sight isn't going to have that issue. But in the cerebral palsy world, I mean, this is very ignorant of me to ask, but what sport? So would you be in the Paralympics? I play Paralympic football. Yeah. Paralympic football. Is there any other Paralympic sports you think you could have a go at and just absolutely clean up? If there was any, I was allowed to do. Now that it doesn't exist because it's head injury. But if there was like cerebral palsy boxing or MMA. You'd be in there? Not even close. I'd win. You'd be in Wouldn't there? Wouldn't even train. Just show up digging heads. I would love that. But, but obviously there's like, you know, there's classes for like how severe your well, that's, condition is. Yeah, that's why, to bring it back to the trans debate, Colin, the way they'd be like, oh, you just let fucking, you know, a recently transitioned man just play women's sport. It always, that always rubbed me the wrong way. Because even with cerebral palsy football, you can't just go, have cerebral palsy. I can play at any level. Mm-hmm. There's four levels. There's five, six, seven, eight. My group Who do we baby is driving me crazy. But the, those are the levels with eight being basically no restriction. Okay. And five being the most impaired. So you have to have a five or a six on the field at any time. And you're only allowed one eight. You can't have more than one eight. Oh, you must feel great when you're the eight, man. Yeah, they're walking fucking. around the place. Just you fucking remember who's eight right here. <laughs> Who's doing all the fucking work right here? Yeah. So I was a six in terms of my movement. Okay. So I look fine, but I can't turn or anything that quickly. Okay. So you were like, <laughs> if I was on the pitch, you were allowed to have sevens and eights then. But some of the fives were people in like literally in wheelchairs playing goalkeeper. Right. And they were fucking outstanding. Like they'd leap from the fucking chair, save the ball, and then just get back into it. Like, oh my god, fucking mental. And is there a to- is there a total number you're allowed with when you add those points up? No, no. You or is only, it just a combo of you? Just that you you can have any combo, but the minimum is one five or six and one eight. You see, you know what's mad? The, the real badass shit is when people like have a, a disability and they still just do the real version of it. Yeah, like there's a guy with one arm who's an MMA fighter and he knocks a fuck out of everybody. Yeah. Or like it's it's admirable. I'm like it's mental, but it's admirable as fuck. What's the guy called Hegan Machado or something like just jujitsu guy? Joe Joe Rogan always talks about him. The guy's like like a sort of deformed hand from birth. Yeah. So the guy couldn't do all the grips and stuff that people would normally do. So he developed all these other grips with one hand basically. Yeah. And then that transferred into like grappling for MMA because he didn't he never was able to do it. Yeah. So we had to develop it a different way. Yeah, because I, cause I was always, when I was a stoner, people would be like, why don't you roll joints? I'm like, because I can't, because my hand can't hold steady and I can't bend in the way you need to roll. And someone went, uh, well, I know there was a guy on the internet rolled it with his feet. Why don't you learn to do that? And I was like, do you want to smoke a joint that uh-huh. I have just fucking curled my toes around? Yeah. Do you know what else he did with his feet? Everything ever. <laughs> also, I also have it in my feet, so yeah. that I, doesn't work. I can barely stand on the fucking thing. <laughs> Let alone roll a giant. Imagine taking the sock off. You got a new pair of Nike socks. Imagine. Fluff between your toes now. I <laughs> off. Someone lights a joint, a big bit of fluff goes. <laughs> Who wants to smoke here? And I'm just sitting fucking uh, Indian style. Yeah. Uh, you got some with you. You're just chatting pitching. away and you can pass it off. Like. <laughs> want it? Number that? Uh, I'll hold it. There you go. <laughs> I wouldn't hit that. Do you want a blowback? <laughs> <laughs> hey, flavored skins, man. Doritos or something? <laughs> <laughs> then we could get vinegar reps. A- <laughs> if I told you that was a rapper from New York, you'd believe me. Like if you checked out vinegar reps, vinegar reps is insane. <laughs> McCann, if he came in, went you heard that new vinegar reps song, fucking powerful. I'd be- fully be into it. Oh yeah, <laughs> McCann's wild for that. He, I thought I was in the hip hop music, and then he'll hit me with someone. But the I've guy, never heard of. I mean, like, see, see when Tyler the Creator put out like that album this week, like a deluxe version of his other album. Yeah, I mean, he would drop anything to go listen to that. You know, it's a good job he does nothing yeah. important. He'll know? he'll drop anything to go stalk Tyler the Creator outside a spar. Like he, like if he was on stage mid set and it, you know, like a notification come up from YouTube, like it was online, he'd be like, anyway, guys, I'll speak to you in a minute. He would just be in the toilets, <laughs> motherfuckers, you know. Like, <laughs> 
guy's obsessed. That used to be me with Eminem until he just dropped shade after shade. I, I said I said that and I was like that album came out and I was like I bet there was a lot of free a lot of miming in the bathroom mirror this week and he goes oh I'm driving the all mad <laughs> it's like I'm blasting in the middle of the night now. thirty year old son's just in the kitchen like fuck <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay I'm a fucking walking paradox <laughs> like, fucking go to New York now go to New York can I make sight <laughs> oh fucking hell I I have questions here oh yes yes. The, the people actually give us questions and some of them are i know we'll be able to chat a wee bit about them because they're very specific to your interests have you watched yellowstone yet no someone has asked it? have you not said no I've, it was just i watched it all in one go and uh didn't shut up about it for about three weeks i've never even heard of it it's a show about uh, cowboys ah but it's actually phenomenal it's uh, i've said this eight times on the podcast if i describe it to you you'll think it sounds shite yeah just but watch you have it. to watch it what's it on Paramount. Fuck it now. Oh no, I do Get have on that. There. I do have Get that. On there, fire stick, I bought it for the South Park season coming out. This is how fucking stupid I am. I will actively pay for and forget to cancel almost every streaming service and then still watch it on the illegal fire stick. Shout out <laughs> at me, bro. Don't come at me. Um what do you make of Vince McMahon's new Mexican look? You seen this? I think I might have, but I didn't. I didn't know if it was current or. This is a guy who was like got in trouble for being a bit of a sex offender. I'm fully leaning into the look. Yeah. What would I be typing in here? Um, mustache. There he is, top left. Oh man! <laughs> Finally, look at his age, even though he's the head pulled off him. <laughs> you couldn't pull that face further back. Nah, but uh, what about? I mean, phenomenal neck for an old boy. Like, oh, uh, see, when he was mid sixties, the cunt was jacked he's juiced up there juicy mcgee tore um, both his quads getting into the ring one time one of the funniest clips i've ever seen it's amazing dave showed that to me and i near wet my pants have you seen this now yeah, yeah. oh my god <laughs> that like i i had a minor like tear in my quad <laughs> playing rugby once and if for about five or six months it felt like i had a dagger in my leg yeah and so, he, so to tear them both in one go and by the way walked of his own accord backstage after insisted on walking like someone was behind him like sort of like making sure he don't yeah. fall insisted that he just down their back but it's so funny that they have to like play along with it you know when he jumps in he's like i'm still playing along even though it's probably just like ripping pain <laughs> he's literally sitting down in the ring and the announcer's like and the boss is relaying a message and it was like just everything that could go wrong in that moment went completely wrong oh god oh fuck it it's the funniest thing i've ever fucking seen look at that so he was done what was he done for accused of like paying people to buck him so what he technically done wasn't illegal but it's how he paid them so he used company money to pay non-disclosure agreements what it was uh, alleged was that he was like oh you want to be top diva you better get on top of me and would buck them and then when he was done bucking them like his second in command would fuck them and then they'd pa be passed down the chain of command in wwe of just getting fucking rid and then he was paying out fucking 1.2 million, 2 million, 3 million for these fucking NDAs. But he was using the company money, he wasn't using his money. And that's what he got in trouble for. So it wasn't, Interesting. It wasn't necessarily the, the banging. It was the, that wasn't your money to spend. I, I thought he would have got in trouble more for the, the sort of power play of going like, the, the, you know, that exchange of like, you want to make it big in this business. The, the amount of shit of get that, on that get on this business that is in wrestling it's almost like you can't even start to punish people because it's been going on for fucking years there's a lot of that and it, it's wrestling's very it's like almost like Northern Ireland as a place it's like so backwards yeah that like WWE's only recently like here we, we need to stop making fun if we bring out a Japanese guy don't play a gong in his entrance only oh. now is WWE like that okay do you know what they're I mean? getting a bit woke now only now though yeah cause but you had but the whole thing was like creating a character that stands out against everyone else yeah so, you know so they'll be like what are we missing here yeah do you ever see the guy a, a sumo wrestler <laughs> had that i know they had that he's fully white who um Is no yogazuna no yeah he wasn't even japanese he was Samoan. he's the rock's cousin <laughs> the boulder his name was rodney <laughs> really <laughs> Not good. his name was rodney anawa and they're like japanese there was a guy from here called finley well, you know, when you're when you're one of those sort of Polynesians, you know, <laughs> he passed for I, it, like, I think you can just mix it. There, like, yeah. there's Hawaiians that look fully Japanese yeah. and then look more Samoan or fully black or well, what, you know. One of the worst things they did, they brought out a, a Japanese wrestler. If you can Google him, get an image of him, it's better than me telling you. He was called Lord Tensai. 
and he was called an ancient Japanese warrior. So okay. he was made up as this legend Japanese wrestler. And this is who came out. Is it like a fucking white? <laughs> Well, is that me? He's <laughs> got the same tits. Are those tattoos fairly died out? Yeah, yeah. Just give me shit all over this. <laughs> I mean, that guy's the fucking. That's my Halloween sword. Yeah, I, I can fucking get it. <laughs> Two sharpies and a pair of knickers. <laughs> and I'm turning up as fucking this Japanese. That's dude. you, someone going over time in Lavery's that last photo. Just get the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran comes back on for a fucking uh, <laughs> an encore. That's, he did an encore, didn't he? Aye. That's fucking mad. I, I wish I'd seen it. Yeah, that's yeah. there we So are. this was ancient Japanese warrior. Looks like he just sells fucking Audis. What's Japanese about him? The, the painted Japanese words on his face. Okay. It's like if I came out and went, here's this Mexican wrestler and I just have Boojum tattooed in my back. <laughs> Let's see what his real name is. You probably know. It's Albert. No. Matt Bloom. Matt Bloom. <laughs> what a stretch, man. Yeah. What a stretch. <laughs> we're, we're, we need a Japanese guy. Fancy it? <laughs> Gets the tape out. No, That's okay. not <laughs> He looks fucking... He comes up to the ring with a bag of ramen every time. A bag of ramen? A bag of ramen. I don't understand food. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was a thing. Chopsticks? Good with chopsticks? <laughs> Who, him or me? You, Nightmare? What do you think? I'm, I can barely use a fork. Okay. I can barely use my hands to eat. <laughs> if, you could, if, if it wasn't judged, I'd eat out of a trough. No fucking problem. Oh, nice. Yeah. What about just anything in a pop? I have to take it apart. Okay. I end up, do you? Yeah, I end up dropping it. Fuck's sake. So, man. it's pain in the arse. Just man. a wee burger for you. Yeah. What do you make? Oh, yeah, sorry. When we did that. What did Willie make of Ardoin when he did the star? Fuck is that? So, it's a... It's a club in Ardoin, it's like a social working men's club and when me and Patty did it we went there and they were like there's about 200 in and there was about easily about 350 in it was all standing and a few seats about and everyone was just crowded together and you could never get them to be quiet they just had to shout Oh God. And it was difficult well I say difficult it was like you were getting laughs from being like I'm from East Belfast yeah so it was yeah. one of you're almost like just fucking playing up the rowdiness of it than you are doing a set it was enjoyable and they liked it, but it was one of those you came off being like, thank fuck we weren't murdered there. Yeah, fuck that. I'm done with them. I'm done with those gigs. I'll do them every now and then. They, they pay quite well. I'm so doing the Devonish coming up. Is that probably going to be a nightmare? It's great. Okay. I'll it's great. They, like, it can be rowdy, but the security is normally good. Yeah. And if you're, you'll get a little bit of low level talking. But once you get a big laugh, once you almost get that, everyone pays attention. Nice. So it's it's fucking good. Devonish is good. Looking forward to it. <laughs> what piece of TV or film scared you as a child when you watched it? The public safety adverts in the 90s always made me run out of the room or have nightmares. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the big one for me that fucked me over was... We didn't, like, I don't even know if anyone was really in the movies in our house, but there was like a, a small selection of VHS tapes back in the day in our house. Aye. And there was always like, just random, you know, like Conan the Barbarian and fuck, and there was Nightmare on Elm Street the freddy krueger thing and it was all i did this numerous times in my childhood where someone told me something and i didn't believe them i was like shut up yeah you know like the old harp tins used to rip off my dad was like don't fucking touch them they're sharp and i went are they bollocks and then i went up to the bathroom <laughs> and just went and cut myself open and went oh they are sharp they yeah. are sharp indeed and same thing with the freddy krueger it was always like don't watch that don't watch that and as soon as they were out of the house or no, they weren't out of the house but they were out of sight and i was like yeah fucking here we go it was like early in the sunday morning or something no one's up and i was like put that in wherever it's like open and seen fucking there's a girl, naked woman on a bed with like the flames of hell around her and on he's like, like yeah, with a big hand <laughs> damaged and then and then that was that was scary enough and then going to like shortly after what the only ever circus i ever went to and there was a, like a movie section where they had like a fucking all these characters coming out and like fucking et and whatever and then they had like a horror type thing. So it was like yeah. Edward Scissorhands and Freddy Krueger and all. So me being like, that's the scariest shit I've ever seen. And then an actual Freddy Krueger as part of this show at a circus. And I mean, I was, <laughs> I was like under the chair. I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> Never mind the tiger. <laughs> it's actual Freddy Krueger. I'm going to shit my pants here. One thing that fucked me up. And it's the weirdest thing to say it's great. It was an episode of Teletubbies. Okay. <laughs> right? And they would have this weird section where the Teletubbies would sit down and watch a show. Yeah. And they brought out this bear and this lion. 
and they look they were fucking nightmare fuel the bear would come out and go like I'm the bear with big brown hair and then the lamb would come out and go Arr! and chase it was the fucking most disturbing thing it was actually banned it was banned after like a few show ones because people were like this is fucking my kids up oh my god it was the most in- bizarre thing you'll ever see actually now no, this is open the whole fucking can of worms here there was a a film I, I would need to do a bit of research right but I remember it was on t- it was like on TV in my granny's house and they lived on the north coast and in this film there was like a guy like an old creepy man I don't know what the plot was but I just remember there was a guy dressed as an old lady to like kidnap a kid and she recognised the fucking t- but like Don Luce Castle and I was in this movie Right. there was like a tattoo on his hand and she saw the tattoo and then looked at his face and it was a man dressed as an old woman and I remember just it was daytime just on the TV I'd be but, fine now but, but I was just like oh Oh yeah, <laughs> a man dresses Excuse a woman. Excuse me, respect uh, his face, yeah, please. Murdered a child, put her in a boat. That it, say her brave. Yeah, it's that's that's a woman <laughs> killed that child. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's like a fucking shooting in that school the other week. The police guys outside. Yeah, he shot the thing, or she shot the kids, or whatever. And they're yeah. like, it's actually he. It's yes. a trans person. Yeah. Respect that serial killers pronouns please yeah when they put fucking automatic rounds through a child's brain yeah <laughs> but you don't know it's a struggle <sighs> well i mean the oh, whole thing's sad you yeah. know what i mean the whole thing like yeah. why what what makes like the whole f- it's a mess yeah. where do you start like yeah but it's what, fucked but that movie so the guys dressed up as a one did that just freak you out seeing like this? just just the fact that there there could be an old creepy man dressed as a fucking old lady. I'm gonna have to try and find it. Let me see. Miss Doubtfire. I was about to say if it's Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Featuring Don Little well, transphobic young Colin. It's not right. <laughs> There's only two genders for fuck's sake. I don't know what I don't know. The medallion which starred Jackie Chan. Um, let me see. It's not what I thought it was gonna be like. I love that movie of it's Jackie Chan versus the Ra. Oh, yeah. Pierce Brosnan's Jerry Adams. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's not Jerry Adams, but he absolutely is Jerry Adams. <laughs> I'm gonna do a bit of research ahead of like the next podcast or something and find out what the fuck movie that was. After tuning, I want to see what it that could was. Have, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just like I don't know. I don't know. It could have been a TV show. Could have been whatever. But I'm gonna have to get a real refined search on it. I should get chat gpt and just be like hey what movie was shot in northern ireland with an old creepy pedo man i tried using <laughs> i tried using that chat gpt be like school around the corner <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you frank we uh, on that yeah oh, have right. you seen that clip no i'm fucking adorable on it. have you played have you played it on 10 other podcasts no no just she i did it on how would i find it it's on Shane's team with me. Ah, fuck panic. it then, fuck it. <laughs> it's not on YouTube. Oh, it's not? Okay, nope, fair nope. enough. Fair enough. Jesus Christ. What else we got here? Any update on your TV show getting picked up? I thought it was great. Very funny. Maybe you need to do it yourself. Could end up a big fuck you to Channel 4. I thought he was talking to you there for a second. I f- Here's the thing. Forgot I even had that. Um, no, it's not. Get- basically, they got a new commissioner in and cleared the board of everything. That happens all the time. All the time. The frustrating element for me was because when I when we wrote it's a it's a little bit darker, but as it goes to TV, they're like, why doesn't this person like why is that more cheerful and bright, colourful? And they kept going, Well, Dairy Girls and the Inbetweeners were a big success. If you could make this a mix between the Inbetweeners and Dairy Girls, we'll commission it. If you could get a get it in between Inbetweeners and Dairy Girls, get that mix, and then we we'll made it and they went it is very similar. It's like the in-betweeners meets Dairy Girls. And you're like, you asked me to make that for you. That's what you asked me to do. Hey, do you know um, two of the most successful <laughs> shows that have ever come out of Channel 4? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Please. And, then, and then you make that and you go. I don't know what it is yet, but <laughs> do that anyway. <laughs> that's, that's, and that's someone's joke. I just don't uh, understand why you can't be, there, it always has to come off the back of something else, you know what I mean? Like, how how hard did your woman push for Dairy Girls? Like, how hard a sale is Dairy Girls? Yeah. As an idea? It must have been fucking years, I think, she pushed for that, like. Yeah. And, oh yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and the frustrating thing is then when we put ours out, they're like, oh, it's just copying Dairy Girls, which I didn't want to emulate. I re- Nothing wrong with Dairy Girls, it's, fine, it's a good show. But I was like, my story's different than that. 
You know yeah. I mean? It's not as cheerful. It's not really a fucking... It's a family comedy, but it's based on my life, which is a little bit fucked up. I wanted to be a little bit more fucked up. But when you go to TV, you, you fight that many battles that you have to let some things go. Yeah. You can't die on every hill. Oh, bro. Do you know what I mean? I'd be fucking packing dynamite on you, every you'd hill. You'd lose your mind. I remember at one point we called someone a pedo. And then they complained. They were like, you can't call someone a pedo, so take pedo out of the script. And then me and Dave sat for an hour putting pedo in the every line. <laughs> every, like, what's this pedo doing? What are you having for your pedo breakfast, you pedo? And then they came back and went, the one pedo's fine. Oh, yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah, and that, what I realized is you go too far. Oh, that's, that's what They have to push back on something. Yeah. So if you can then get it to the level you wanted it by going initially too far, that, that is how you do it. Do you know what my trick is? What's that? Don't change it. Send it back and tell them it's changed. <laughs> and I, I've never written a TV script in my life. <laughs> no, never will. Don't have the patience. Yeah, no, though. Like when they send it back, it's literally like word, like certain words underlined. It that's very strenuous. I didn't like. It was weird. It was. It's nice to say I've done it, oh. but it, it put like a stone on me making it. Because I was just, I was getting up late at night. Every take, you're eating a burger. Just I, like the. Can month. you pretend to eat? No, I'm <laughs> ma- method. <laughs> He's 19 sausage yeah. rolls deep. And in the in the month leading up to filming, I was getting up late in the morning or early, like at night, no, like three in the morning, sweating, freaking out, just chain eating rounds of bread. Just panic bread? Just panic bread. Like. Panic loaf. I was going here. through like a loaf of night. Never mind pan loaf, yeah. panic loaf. I don't know if you've seen the, the, the wheel. Yeah. Where he gets no, the, I haven't seen it. Yet. He gets the pizza and he just stuffs <laughs> it in him. That was me with Hovis. <laughs> what a weird addiction. Just of all the gear you've ever taken. <laughs> It's the breath of God on me, man. Man, I quit cocaine quicker than a quick crisps. Like, it's fucking... <laughs> Again, there's you. My thing. What was that tongue twister you that said? It, that was it. A quick a quick, co- co- quicker than a quick cr- crisp. <laughs> it's hard to say. Quick cocaine quicker than a quick crisp. <laughs> I fucked it up. <laughs> you turned into Jimmy Brace. A quick, quick cocaine quicker than a quick crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up Ben over. I'll stand up. <laughs> but that's... Yeah, I... So that's what I've realized. is like when I'm really stressed, I eat like fuck. Wow. Because it's like, I, I don't know what that is. Do you ever, you ever do that? Comfort. Is it? Is that Probably. It's like, yeah. Do you ever get your order like a big McDonald's and halfway through it, you're like, I don't even want it. But I've I've, made- we do this, like I'm a fat cunt, but I've been with some people and seen their like McDonald's orders. And like sometimes I'll be like, I'll get a meal and then I'll be cheeky and get three selects or something. And then you see all the like regular wee skinny people's orders and you're like, how are you d- not dead? I have loads of mates who are like really tall and thin. They're like 20 deck of nuggets. Yeah. I have one snack a day. What's your snack? It's a medium pizza. And you're like, that is a week of not eating after that for me to get to your ship. Took my cup. We went with the McDonald's with McCarney and McCann after the only gig we did. Standard. And taking McCarney to McDonald's is like unfreezing the cave, man. Oh, yeah. And just releasing it. McCar- can you hear me? Yeah. Jordy, Jordy's like, can I have an apple pie? And McCarney's like, they don't do fucking apple pies. I'm not stupid. And then they went, no, we do do apple pies. He's like, fuck, do you? No way. So Jordy though, to order an apple pie somehow. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Hey man, can I just have an apple pie there? Please? I'm good, man. I'll just have the apple pie. <laughs> we had him on our podcast this week for the Patreon episode. My blood, check it out. My blood, and check it out. We just had him talking about that time he gets two kebabs. Oh my God, yeah. But that was the gig I did with him. And f- where was that? He was not bad. He didn't even know what time we were talking about. No, really? <laughs> no, he, fucking... he told us a different story. Because he, I, I can't, I, I can't remember what time it was, right? But it was definitely a very hectic time in my life for Maureen and everything. Yes, and I had to yes. go do this gig, right? And I was absolutely frazzled, like knackered, no sleep, fucked, tour show, like, and it was so. I think it was Cold Rain or something, and. Anyway, it was somewhere where they have a proper theatre set up where, like, out the back, there's, like, a curved corridor and changing rooms and showers and all sorts. And I got there, and I drove up in, like, sweats and all because it was just fucking whatever. Had a change of clothes with me, and I was like, I'm going to fucking literally, like... I was, like, jogging around the back and, like, running up steps and doing push-ups, trying to fucking, like, throw a bit of life in himself. Yeah. And then I got a cold shower, got dressed, and I went in. He's like, man, I got the best kebab. I-. <laughs> While he's saying it, he's eating, like, a sleeve of Oreos. <laughs> and he's like, man, that kebab I got in Cookstown or whatever is fucking best kebab I've ever had. And he's like, I'm, get- I'm getting one on the way home. <laughs> After I'm done with these Oreos. Uh, I'm going into heart surgery in a month, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, just getting a lot, the, the last bit of good out of this ticker. <laughs> Two kebabs. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I love that boy. Bless him. Oh, man. Bless his wee soul. My sweetheart. Uh, what would your drag name be? I like Booby Sands. 
boobies. <laughs> that's, that's great. I think that was Aaron Bob. Yeah. Uh, there was one in Liverpool, a drag artist, and this is a mental name. She was called Millie Dollar, which is like the name Millie Dollar, who was like a murdered teenager. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I mean, definitely do wordplay about something else. Oh. Millie Dollar. M- Madeline McCann's big tits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to the stage, Colin Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> this comes out big cock on her. Oh, God. That sounds like, I mean, you know, nothing sacred in, in that word, but fucking, really? Millie Dollar? Millie Dollar. Who else has there been? Amanda Cox. Amanda Cox. There was fucking, uh... yeah, there's so many. It's ridiculous. We pulled it up one weekend. It was a fucking nightmare. Right, a couple of questions left, then we'll GTFO the fuck yeah. out of here. If you had NI comedians pissing bottles, would you be able to guess whose piss belonged to who? Based on the color. Shout out to Liam for that. I mean, yeah. What a great question. I think I think I could get three out of five. Um I know for a fact that someone like Mickey yeah. is void of water. Fluid. Yeah, yeah, he's just his is gonna be like fucking honey. His is gonna be like a green tea you've left out for a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a Smithix, and then <laughs> my, like I'm a I'm a big man for the hydration. So yours would be yours and you and Shane could piss in the bottle of Evian, and it would look. Exactly I, th- I the same. think so. Like so, like if I piss and it's a slight tinge of yellow, yeah. I'd be like, man, I need to drink some. Fluids. I can't remember the last time I pissed yellow. I I I do drink a fuck. I drink about three liters a day. Yeah, it all catches up with me later in the evening though, because yeah. I'll I'll be like two coffees fucking just want to like fucking drink about four of them and yeah. then leave the house and drink another one and then get fucking nine coke zeros i mean like i'll just be full of fluids and then it all hits me at about six o'clock and i'm just like it all hits me at a time 100 where... pisses a day like i can't it, hits... <laughs> <laughs> it always hits me at a time where i shouldn't i there's nowhere to piss i'll be around the toilet all day fine and then as soon as i'm in the car yeah and have a two-hour drive need to piss where was i come back from the other day and i was like <laughs> it's been a long time since i was like not far from just squeezing the end of my dick go, like going down the road to my house she's like get me back <laughs> get me back now <laughs> open the gates uh, well was you, you need a piss so bad when you finally get it sounds like you're getting knocked out and tacking what's that sound when like you're just like oh <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you can need a piss so bad that when you go to piss your body won't let you piss you're like what was all the pain for yeah what are you going on about <sighs> get it out of me uh, uh, uh. <laughs> just come <laughs> Come and get us. <laughs> what's, what's your acid? This is the final question. That uh, what's your acid test of someone being signed or not? Just if they're polite to staff, anyway. That's a big one. Um, mm. If you're at like a McDonald's and they don't clear up after themselves. Yeah, that was my. I think we should do an episode of Bomb Squad where me and Aaron just air out our grievances with each other. <laughs> Does the, he not do that? The cunt is mad for just you know like he finished like half a cappuccino in my car and set it in the footwell just like that just on the floor out of sight a wee bit so i just drove one day and it fell over and just soaked into the fucking carpet and i, I was like human. are you mentally ill bro why would you just leave it like that yeah, put in the cup holder and he never finished that like or this office today i cleaned it up a wee bit can't just left half tins you know fucking bottles of water no lid just half open everywhere bro. <laughs> what's a a big one he's on thin ice a big one for me is if you're buying pints or whatever I'd say maybe you're one short, and then someone's like, "Can you you owe me?" F-? Anyway, if anyone who's like, "You owe me two seventy, yeah, I'm like, "Fuck off!" Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I'll lend someone money. I, I'm not. A, a, I'm not a tight person. Stingy is, annoying. but when you're not stingy, and then someone else is, you're like, "Go fuck yourself!" Like, yeah, I don't like. It's absolutely fine to just be like, "Don't involve me in this. I'm skint." Yeah, you know. Yeah, but it's never the skint people that are. Chasing up no, three no, quid. No, no, no. It's like you owe me three quid and I'm I'm down to my last forty grand. So yeah. I need that. No, it would be cool if I could meet in the middle somewhere, because someone will go like, Man, I promise you I'll get you paid back for that thing. And I'll be like, What is it? And they'll be like, Do you remember I you gave me that thing? And I'll be like, Oh, you absolutely could have got away with that. Yeah, and yeah. I fully forgot about that. Yeah. You know. Whereas I see because I had a mate who rents me a load of money. Rent your money? Rinsed. Rinsed. Rinsed, all right. No, I, mean, I rent money off this fella. <laughs> What's she want for money? <laughs> 40 quid for a 30 quid? Bargain. 
<laughs> because he, I'm always cautious of like oh. I can't, I don't want to feel like people are always paying for me for shit. Like remember right. in Edinburgh, and I near fucking pull the table over to get the meal. Oh yeah, I know. I was like, I'll do it. Don't worry. Because I just don't like feeling like one person paying for everything. I just don't like that feeling. Right. Okay. Like because yes, yeah, be, because of that. Uh, because I mate when I mate rinses you three grand. Bastard. It'll affect you. Bastard. Fuck him now. Well, I'm getting into that. Okay. That's, for That's a different poker. <laughs> Five year past it, you fucking cunt. <laughs> Fuck out. <laughs> right, we'll get out of here. Back of my knees are sweating. Cheers for coming on, William. Thank you, you for having me. When are you doing your big gig? Ulster Hall, 4th of November. Uh, get tickets to that. They're half gone. So let's sell it out, please. Please. God damn. My grandmother needs new hip. And uh, he's also going to the Fringe if you're in Edinburgh. Yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in the Pleasant Cellar at half five. The show's called fucking Disabled or the something. The Hands Dealt. The Hands Dealt. <laughs> Poster shot by now. <laughs> yep. Outstanding. This wizard of the Ew. camera. Where'd you shoot it? What was the backdrop? The Marcus Ward. Okay, nice. Because nice. um, I know the guy runs in there, so he's like, I call in. And then I came out, I was like, it's perfect. Connections. Smoked her out. Smoked her out. <laughs> yeah. Had a full smoke. Was, people end having like wee lunchtime pies and all. We were sitting with a full smoke machine. Yeah, oh, why? That's his special. <laughs> <laughs> the guy can't fucking make a cup of tea with putting his on. Uh, you can be that. doing. You can be doing. <laughs> Yo, what? I'll bleep that in case uh, <laughs> someone steals it. <laughs> <laughs> you can be doing wedding photos. You know, can we do a smoke machine as you come down the aisle? Like the Undertaker here? <laughs> can we just pause this 10 minutes? This bastard heats up. Things like. <laughs> Quay for night. <laughs> Can we hold the bride, please? <laughs> <laughs> Spritz it out. <laughs> God, he is, bro. <laughs> right, we're getting out of here. Cheers, William. Cheers, now. Thank you, for it. Thank No you. worries. All the best. Take it easy. Here we are.